July of 1995 is one month that Roy Akins is unlikely ever to forget. Akins and four other swimmers spent most of that month accompanying what could be juvenile salmon migrations to fish. The swimmers braved dangerous rapids of the Salmon River and treacherous slack water of Lower Granite Reservoir in the hope of bringing national attention to the plight of Idaho's endangered sockeye salmon. The first 270 miles was through the wilderness. On July 15th, four of the swimmers arrived at Spring Bar near Riggins, Idaho, a popular takeoff place for river runners. Did you the coyotes go off when I howled at you? No, I figured that's what was going on. Yeah. Well, years ago, when volunteering for Idaho Rivers United and finding out about the plight of the sockeyed salmon and salmon in general. Uh, the swim came together when I decided that I uh, had two friends that could swim very well and I had a lot of experience in whitewater rafting, decided to put the concept together and uh, try to get national news media out of it so that we could bring um, the plight of the salmon to a national attention and allow people to have a, a feeling for what's right and wrong make a stand at this point with the salmon and say, this is wrong, we need to do something about this. I think this is uh, a, an historic first. Uh, it's the first time, to our knowledge, anybody has ever swam the entire length of the Salmon River. What we hope this swim will accomplish is to draw national attention to the plight of Idaho's endangered sockeye salmon. Sockeye were placed on the endangered species list in 1991. Our salmon are on the brink of extinction. Idaho's sockeye, uh, as well as their spring, summer, and fall Chinook, were listed for protection under the Endangered Species Act nearly four years ago. Since that listing, the numbers have continued to decline because the federal government, the Clinton administration, the Congress of the United States hasn't chosen to do what's necessary to save these fish from extinction. These fish are worth saving. They're a national treasure, they're very valuable fish, and they're part of the heritage of the Northwest. Yeah, my name is Gail Ader, and I'm from Gooding, Idaho. I'm a public school counselor in an elementary school, Popowell Elementary in Buell. And the way I got involved in the Sockeye Survival Swim was uh, I'm a board member for Idaho Rivers United. And uh, Jamie made application to our board for a mini grant, and uh, we thought it was a good idea and gave him a thousand dollars to help put this together. For Gail Ader, the river loses its life if it loses the fish. Uh, my primary hope is that we can draw some uh, appropriate attention to the issue of the salmon. I think there's been a lot of stuff talked about in the media by our representatives that's inaccurate. Uh, our governor and some of our representatives are selling the idea that a spill and a drawdown somehow or another will take more of Idaho's irrigation water and take more of Idaho's recreation water and that simply isn't true. If we can draw down the lower dams on the snake, uh, it'll take less spill water to flush the smolts downstream. Our concern is, is that the Salmon River is dying in the sense that uh, there'll soon be no salmon runs left here. Uh, and if they kill the salmon runs, uh, then it'll no longer be the Salmon River as I know it. I've been a professional river guide here for 12 years and I've lived here full time for seven years. Part of my steelhead that come up here from the ocean. We asked Norm for his comments on the salmon swim. Well, well, I, I find it uh, very interesting and, uh, and actually a very good thing. We have people that are basically making the journey downriver just like the salmon and steelhead smolts do, down through the Salmon River, symbolizing their travel back to the ocean where they grow big and then hopefully come back to us. For Norm Klobitans, saving the salmon is important. I grew up in Pennsylvania and uh, Pennsylvania is a, a very nice place, but we have a lot of Pennsylvanias and we have very few Idahos and we have very few wonderful wild anadromous fish runs like this left anymore. It seems to me that if we as a society can't find the room or the generosity to save a little bit of this, that Idaho will soon be just another Pennsylvania and nothing special or as special as it is now. I, I, my bias is obvious. I'm a professional fishing guide and river guide, 
it's an obvious bias, but uh, I think even from a larger ethical and moral viewpoint that we have very little of this kind of thing left, and we as a society should be magnanimous enough to make room to, to save this for future generations. Paul Ungren is a professional triathlete. This river, like all rivers, to me is my lifeblood. And I think that I have to look at it like that. I think that <clears throat> this river's health is as important as my health. And this river will be here a lot longer than I will be. I'll be gone and this river will still be around. So I'm really concerned with the river's health. And if the salmon are gone, then that's the first sign of a disease, I think. That's how I look at it. It's dying. And I'm doing everything I can to bring it back. And so I'm here to maybe open some eyes, get people involved, take action, to be concerned, to find out what's going on, to learn about our rivers, they're important, and that's why I'm here. At the age of 23, Roy Akins of Jerome, Idaho, is the youngest of the sockeye survival swimmers. Swimmers that didn't actually know each other, and I was uh, friends at different times with both of them, so I was invited from two separate points at one time, actually, so it was obviously supposed to happen, because <laughs> Jamie invited me without knowing that Gail was inviting me, so yeah, it was kind of uh, meant to happen, because I inquired with Jamie first, and then Gail invited me out of the blue, and it seemed like it was meant to be from the start. I was excited to get a chance to give something back to the river that has been so good to me. I've learned so much from and have supported myself off of. And it's finally a chance to just really give something a summer, a big chunk of my summer, which is an important time of the year to me. I'm a summer person. I like to play on the water. And there's a lot of great water out in the state this year. But this is, you know, something that I felt important to do. It was a great opportunity. I'm glad I jumped on it. I would have never forgiven myself if I didn't. Why did Roy feel it was important? Because the Salmon River is, has always been, you know, one of those places that there's not anything like anywhere else you go in the world to see. I mean, you figure that out pretty quick with just a little bit of traveling. And uh, it's, uh, I guess, just the awesome beauty, the, the pristineness, the, the sense that the Salmon River runs free without any dams for 460 miles. Uh, completely wraps around this whole interior mountain range. It's just, it's fantastic. It's a one-of-a-kind thing. In the, river are, uh, are in the river, the fish are a key element to the health of it. I mean, they're, they're, they're part of it. They're as much part of the river as the rock that forms the rapids and uh, the trees that grow alongside of it. It's all, a, it's all, you know, a life system that's right there that, that comes from the river. And um, so when you see the fish disappearing, you know that there's obviously a health, health problem, whether it's happening from upstream in the salmon where, you know, it's still in such raw beauty, it's hard to tell that there is a problem when you just look at it from the surface level. But a, a river is a three-dimensional thing, and underneath there's a lot of health problems, obviously, that are being caused from downstream because you have up here no obstructions. I mean, it's, as, it's a lot the same it was 50, 60 years ago. I mean except for a few new houses and a few new cabins here and there. Uh, it is, it's pretty much the same place. And uh, just a shame to let, it's, you know, it's a moral issue. It's, it'd be just a shame to let the fish go extinct without saying something, letting somebody know that we do care. At Spring Bar, master swimmer Joe Shepard joined the group. She and the other swimmers would alternate, spending two to five hours at a stretch in the water, catching waves on a boogie board and wearing a dry suit over a wetsuit as protection from the cold. Well, actually, I just got here today, and I am scheduled to swim from here to the Lower Granite Dam at Lewiston. So I haven't swam any yet. Are you looking forward to this? Yes, I am. 
In those 190 remaining miles, the river, in effect, would change into a lake. Yes, that's when we will be using less of the current of the river and more of our own muscle. And how many miles is that? I believe it's 36 miles across the reservoir. Whoa. So that will take uh, a pretty big effort to get that last bit in. The lake was expected to present a different set of problems to the swimmers than those encountered on the river. No, I don't believe that it will be still at all. <laughs> I, um, I think there are several rapids left to go over and um, slack water will be more towards the end. For Joe, the balance entails more than the fish and includes the whole intricate web of life. To me, the salmon are watch guards for our waterways. If you think about the fact that the salmon spend so much time and so much effort to get back to the place where it bred itself, to me that speaks of a dedication to that water, to that place, and a good way for us to measure the balance of our water systems. Joe voiced her hope to help focus attention on the salmon crisis. I hope to accomplish conscious awareness to help people to see that they are not alone in caring about the environment, wanting to live in balance with the earth, that it will spark them to do something every day to give back to the earth, that we will all transform our environmental laws and our actions so that we do live in balance with the earth and the sky. I know the issues are very complex, very complex, and there's no easy solutions, and uh, it definitely requires sacrifice for human beings to uh, make the sacrifice to preserve some of this stuff. But uh, it just seems to me that as a creature, how sad is it that we say we don't have room to save any of this anymore, and that uh, we're going to make every place the same, and some of these wild places are going to be lost, and we're just going to say, progress made us push them aside. I, I, I just find it selfish, short-sighted, narrow-minded, and that's just my honest opinion. We had a hair-raising one yesterday. We stood that uh, boat on its uh, tail uh, to where there's only about three quarters of the uh, of the boat sticking out of the water uh, at Chittam Rapids. Uh, it wasn't so scary because you didn't even have time to be scared. It was just one wild and woolly adventure. And uh, I can imagine those salmon trying to go back up through that thing to go spawning. That's, uh, that's a wild and woolly one there. It was a real, real thrill of a lifetime. What made Dave decide to follow the salmon down the river? Well, see, I've always wanted to make the trip down the river. Uh, it's uh, a case where this opportunity just came up. I did not know any of these people before I made the phone call. They welcomed me to come with them on the ride. Uh, you know, they've just been... Uh, great to be with. They're very experienced uh, people. I never had any doubts at any time. Uh, and by the way, we had some very good gourmet meals on this trip. We have some... Uh, Mike is our uh, part of the support group with me, and boy can she cook. Uh, I even flipped a few pancakes and uh, made some uh, uh, kickback uh, uh, French bread the other morning uh, that we all enjoyed uh, but it's it's just been I guess I parable this as a chance in a lifetime for me a chance in a lifetime for the salmon you know either they make it this year or they're gone the way I, that's the way I see it you think it's that close? I really believe it's that close and anybody that believes in uh, you know uh, as strongly as I do that the dams are wrong and that this barging system that they have tried for 15 years and we keep lowering the amount of, pe uh, of salmon that can get back up 
you know, they have to try this system. It, this is a logical system. Now, some people say it doesn't support uh, by scientific data, but I mean, scientists have to use a little bit of common sense too. You can flush those salmon down through that river as fast as it's going right now, and we can kick them on down the river. But, you know, if they come to slack water, they get confused in that slack water. If they go through the turbines, they don't stand a chance. That's like us walking into the propeller of an airplane. We don't stand a chance. You know, if we get confined into a barge, and if you put, you know, thousands of people uh, in a little tiny gymnasium, uh, type uh, facility or even say a box car and and drove them down to the ocean uh, you know they wouldn't have a chance either you know this we got to give the salmon a chance this year give it a try each uh, year for many years thousands of juvenile salmon have been collected at lower granite reservoir and hauled in trucks or barges around the complex of eight dams on the lower snake and columbia rivers Yet the numbers of returning salmon have continued to decline. The consensus among fish advocates is that barging doesn't work. I guess the major uh, crux uh, that we face today and the primary purpose for this swim uh, is to show that we can get the smolt down this nice wild scenic uh, flowing river uh, but then all of a sudden they hit the dams and it's like putting on the brakes. It's like heading down a dead-end uh, alley. Uh, this is the start of the demise of the uh, salmon when they get into the turbines and they have to be barged. They're bunched together. They get the disease. Uh, they're going down a, uh, in a barge instead of the river. Uh, they kind of lose that instinct of of where home uh, is to be able to come back to spawn. Now you can't just go in and, and re-transplant uh, salmon just from one stream to another stream. They'll only go back to where the uh, eggs were hatched and where uh, they originally uh, came from. So you can't hatch uh, trout in, or salmon in a, in a hatchery uh, in Boise or in North Idaho or door shack or someplace like that and truck them up to redfish and let them go uh, and expect them to come back to redfish uh, when it's time for them to spawn. They'll go back to where they were originally reared. The barging of the smolts, uh, to the best information I have, uh, doesn't work because it disorients them. Uh, there's a tremendous attrition as they're barged downstream. Uh, they're, they're losing fish as they try to collect them. The collection doesn't work as well. The vast majority of the smolts aren't collected and barged. They're run through the turbines. While the turbines are running, the barging won't work. It just doesn't work. The collection systems aren't there. If you can build an appropriate collection system, then why barge? Collect them, put them down a spillway or a fish ladder headed downstream. Uh, the fact remains is, is we can't collect the smolts in a river-wide river uh, effectively without killing them. The dams were never designed, they were never built, nor are they operated today to safely pass juvenile fish. Uh, as a result, 95% of the juvenile salmon and steelhead, the smolts that leave Idaho, never make it to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the dams need to be modified, the reservoirs behind them need to be operated in a manner that's a little more friendly to these downstream migrating smolts. When that happens, we'll enjoy healthy, self-sustaining runs of these fish again. If it doesn't happen, the fish will continue to dwindle towards extinction. I believe that the Endangered Species Act is, like all of our environmental laws, in that we, we really need to let our congressmen know that we support these things that we are not going to stand by and allow uh, consumerism and our, our selfishness to, to overcome our natural resources here. Well, I think the, the survival of Idaho's sockeye salmon and salmon and steelhead depends entirely upon the Endangered Species Act remaining strong. Uh, if the act is gutted, 
Uh, if it's weakened significantly, as Idaho Senator Craig and Senator Kempthorne are working hard to do right now, then I think uh, within a few years we'll see the extinction of salmon and steelhead both in Idaho. That's a loss that's uh, immeasurable. Uh, I think the extinction of those fish would be the most profound tragedy this region's ever seen, an ecological tragedy, an economic tragedy, and a cultural tragedy. So my interest is kind of multifaceted. It's not a single issue about I'm an obsessed fisherman. My fear is, is that the fish are an indication of the health of the riparian system. And if in our gluttony, if in our greed, we can sell cheap power to aluminum companies or we can uh, light up Las Vegas for a couple of extra days at two kilowatt per hour, uh, cents per hour less, then that's uh, an unfortunate use of a resource. We are killing the salmon runs to provide cheap electricity to federally subsidized industries. That's a mistake. Everybody pays for that. And Idaho is losing because the aluminum industries in Washington are benefiting from this. Uh, I think the Corps of Engineers is clearly not interested in saving these fish. They're not interested in changing the operation of their dams. And I think their strategy is to study the fish to death. We have more information now about Pacific salmon and steelhead than we do any other fish that swims in water. Uh, the time uh, now is for action, not for more study, not for paralysis by analysis. You know, the issue of cheap power is a real one. We in the Northwest benefit tremendously from Hawley Hydroelectric we have in this area. Uh, however, when you're talking a few cents uh, uh, per day or a few cents per month uh, across everyone's bill, then that's not a heck of a lot of uh, cost to me as an individual. Also, you have to recognize the cheapest power consumers are not residents, not the, the people of the country, but the industries. And it's not going to uh, make a serious negative economic impact upon the country to pay a few more cents per hour for our energy. During the long days in the river, perhaps imperceptibly at first, the Sockeye survival team members found their attitudes and values changing. The river was becoming an ever more important presence in their lives. In turn, they were becoming more in tune with the river. We've grown a lot as a group, as a team, like the river itself. Every time you come around a bend, a new stream pours into the river, a new river. We've had the East Fork, the Middle Fork, and the South Fork join us. This river's gotten bigger and more powerful. And the volume just adds more power to it. And we've come 250 miles, I believe, somewhere around there. And <clears throat> I think we're getting stronger too and our voices are getting louder. Every mile that we cover brings a little more truth I think to what we're doing because it seems like almost an impossible goal to swim 450 miles down a river like this. This is a wild, wild river. I, n I never had any idea how wild it was until we got on it. It's just very relaxing, the sounds out here, the thunder and the lightning have been just amazing coming down the canyon and you'll see these huge thunderheads coming in. You know, you can start judging how much time you have to get everything back in their bags and either under a tarp or in the tent. And then it um, will just pelt rain, just pelt, and it's kind of cool being under the tarps because then you hear that. It's very, sen or very sensory, is that the word, that for your vision, your smell, your um, hearing, the sands have been different, um, it's a very spiritual place, you know, to get in contact with yourself and where you relate to the universe. You know, it sounds kind of cosmic, but I think that's where it's all at. Um, I don't know, you just kind of go with how you feel. Well, I think there have been funny moments, you know, when everyone's together. And um, Jamie's pretty funny. He, he'll do something kind of funny. And when Dave Kordiak was here, the kayaker, um, they've been friends for a long time. And, and they would just kind of, um, 
I think they're bonded, and so they would kind of tease each other, but in a really funny way, and then the other guys would get involved with it, and it would just, um, it was a lot of close moments, and where people really enjoyed being around each other, even though we're all kind of different. It, it's fun, you, we laughed a lot, and um, people smiled, they were singing, they were humming, you know, and that's cool, you, you know that they're comfortable, you know that they're happy, and I think that's the most of the time everyone was happy. They're just happy being outside and, and appreciating what we have. Uh, what we're asking is for President Clinton to order the Corps of Engineers and National Marine Fishery Service to uh, make the river more like a free-flowing river. And what that's going to take is to flood, spill the fish over the dams and lower the reservoirs so that the river is more like a free-flowing river. Now this can be done on the four dams on the lower snake uh, from lower granite down. Uh, this will speed up the, the smolts rate of recovery and their decrease their time uh, in the water. This trip used to take seven to ten days. It now takes up to two months for the same migration. The white water area that we just covered was difficult for us uh, on our boogie board and swimming in the white water. But for the smolt, that's the easy section. The difficult section for them is when they reach the dams, which we will reach in probably about two weeks. Uh, at that point, the fish uh, normally get flushed through the turbines or they get corralled and pumped into barges. We're asking that they not barge the fish anymore because it has been proven to be ineffective. They've been doing it for over 20 years uh, and we had one sockeye return last year. Uh, we're asking for all people that feel that this is wrong, not just uh, if they know anything about it, but if they really feel that this morally wrong, that this species of this, uh, this great salmon goes extinct, that they come and visit with us at the dam. We are going to reach Lower Granite Dam. Um, we want a symbolic gesture of what's going on and to be able to spearhead this movement onward and get a networking process going at this point. Uh, the, the alternative um, for not doing all we can right now is to witness the extinction of these fish, the extinction of what was once the world's largest run of salmon and steelhead. And uh, to me that alternative is uh, pretty distasteful. Extinction, extinction is not an option. What we're asking to happen at the, the dams is that the federal government, uh, especially the Corps of Engineers, the National Marine Fishery Service, they allow for spillways, which are spilling the fish over the dams, and for drawdowns of the reservoir to make it like a, more like a free-flowing river. We're also asking that with the um, science that we have today, if we can put a person on the moon, we can save the salmon.